Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back for another TLC takeover on all of Master Blackjack's channels, which we're so excited about. And look who I have here with me today. Dr. Kirk Honda, I'm so excited to have you back. It's great to be back. And you're a really busy guy, you know? So, I mean, every time that you come on, it's just kind of like you're giving us a gift. So I just want to say in the time of the holidays, thank you for this gift. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, I always like talking with you about this. And, you know, there's a new season of 90 Day Fiance. So I, I was curious what you thought about it. So I guess we'll get into it maybe. Yeah, this new season, the new dynamic. This is, I mean, there's a lot of new dynamics, but I, I'm... Excited. I feel like finally we're getting kind of a TLC show that doesn't seem so pre-produced on some of the storylines. I feel like these are very organic kind of brand new fun storylines. Cool. Yeah. Interesting. Do you, I mean, do you have one so far that you're kind of most invested in or is it too soon to tell? You know, I am pulling for Mike and Natalie. I know some people aren't, but, and Rebecca and Zied, I guess I am as well. I'm, I'm terrified of what's going to happen when Julia comes to Brandon's house. Oof. So well, I guess we're going to find out what happens there, but it doesn't look like it's going to work out very well. I, f I think, and I'm kind of curious, but in my opinion, watching Brandon try to cater so much to his parents and let them know kind of what they want to hear. And then also over here doing the same thing with Julia at some point, they're all going to have to come together when she does arrive and, there's, they're going to see that there's a lot of mistruths here. Yeah, I mean, the way he approaches it, he definitely takes a backseat literally and will uh, defer to like, well, even though inside I don't agree with this, I'm just not going to say anything. And I'm guessing we're going to see that blow up in his face. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm hoping it does end up working out. But again, unlike Brittany and Yazan this season on this other 90 day, that felt a little pre-produced we know or we see maybe it's clever editing that julia is gonna eventually come and maybe end up taking a pregnancy test that goes positive so that doesn't you don't really pre-produce and play with your life like that so that's why i'm starting to feel like these are just a little bit more organic yeah it's good to see it's you you want to get invested in something that's really happening yeah and then as far as rebecca and zed i'm curious what you think but her daughter and her daughter's boyfriend seem to have a, a point that, you know, she's bringing him there. He's very controlling in the way. Uh, I mean, I understand that this is his culture. This is his religion. And that's why he is so controlling. But uh, I mean, do you think that this could work? Or do you think that now well, that he's yeah. coming on her turf? It it, yeah, be. that's a big question mark, right? We don't know what, because he, he said, look, when we're in Tunisia, you got to live like Tunisians. But when I come to the States, you can dress however you want to dress. He said something along those lines. We'll have to see. I could see it going either way. It seems like it would be hard to just completely discard your culture and your upbringing. But he seems open enough. Um, but we definitely saw some tendencies towards anger and control in the last season. But... At the same time, she stands up for herself. You know, she doesn't take a backseat. So uh, we'll have to see how they work that out. Well, see, and that's what I found interesting about this because the fact that she doesn't, she didn't take a backseat in Tunisia, I don't feel like she's, I mean, I feel like she's definitely not going to take a backseat, especially in the United States where she has that solid support system. And that makes you more comfortable to be who you are and kind of react in a different way. I feel like support is everything and it kind of changes the way that you approach things. Yeah. And I think the two of them genuinely have a connection, which will help them to communicate about these things. It's not about advocating for yourself and standing up for yourself. It's also about preserving the bond and the love between the two of you as you have these disagreements. I, okay. Okay. I like that. Well, speaking of disagreements, um, I know we're going to get to Mike and Natalie in a second, but <sighs> Jovi and Yara, is there <laughs> any chance that this can work? Who knows? I mean, they've definitely shown us that the two of them seem a little flippant about the choice to head into this relationship. Uh, of the couples, they seem the least sure that 
this is the one the least actually in love with each other who knows maybe they have a connection that we just can't see on the show but there's definitely some uh concerns there for sure i mean when they said what do you like about jovi and she's like well his body or at least he did have a good body i'm like that's the best that you have is there some sort of what that's all maybe personality like he's kind to you he showed up with flower is there anything else yeah you'd like to hear someone say he's the love of my life i like this about him i like that about him i like this you know and without that and then what she said you have to wonder what's going on there for her especially because you know they were about to be parents together so you would just think I mean, in my opinion, and listen, thinking gets you into trouble sometimes, so maybe you shouldn't just think, but I would just assume that there would be even more of an emotional attachment and connection between the two because of the circumstances. It's not like they just met. They've actually, you know, they were about to be a little family. Yeah, and they talked about that. They said that when she got pregnant, that brought them a lot closer together, which you're touching on. And maybe now that that has passed, Unfortunately, the two of them are having a harder time re uh, connecting with those feelings that they had for each other originally. Okay. Well, before we bring up, we have another special guest um, who is also a part of TLC, has uh, his own kind of dynamic that I'm sure it's going to be fun to bring him on here and talk with us for a minute. Um, I want to just discuss really quick the last couple that we were technically introduced to in this first episode, which again is Mike and Natalie. And you said that you're kind of rooting for Mike and Natalie, right? Yeah. Are you bested? I mean, as a clinician, I'm never invested, so to speak. I just see the potential there for them to get their needs met romantically with each other. The beginning of the, the last season that they were on, it seemed like they had a lot of affection and a lot of love for each other. And then they triggered each other and both of them put up walls. And I see that maybe when they're in the same town, they can love on each other and it will warm up their relationship. We've seen a lot of coldness up until this point. Right. Well, and a lot of people were automatically like, no, Natalie's going home. Do you see that the way he puts her in the car and kind of shuts the door? And I think that it's important for us to remember that TLC is still a network and there, I mean, there, someone has the job to make editing very, very clever and she might not actually end up going home. So maybe if they can put their differences aside, this could work, but technically she's arriving just two months after ending this engagement. Right, so we'll, we'll have to see. And I hope that they can get back for their sake to that original space that they were in when, they, when he first went to Ukraine. Well, and then, I mean, I just, I guess this is my own question because you might have a completely different thought process about this, but I feel like over here in America, and I don't want to sound ignorant. Um, I feel like sometimes we get, we have the ability to get kind of emotional and express like, you know, I love you. And sometimes maybe we don't love you or yes, like you're my best friend. And that's probably somebody you've met five times. And sometimes we over kind of sell it. Whereas Natalie comes in and she's like, you want me to say I love you? I don't. Like, why do you? It's almost like I'm not going to be fake with you. Is that just a, in your, I mean, do you feel like it's because she's from a different part of the world and they just have more of this like brash way of dealing with things? Or is there any way we can break this down? Yeah. Uh, I've heard people from Ukraine say that there's a big difference between them and Americans in just the way you described that for Americans, we'll, we'll like say really nice things to people when we don't really mean them. And, and so I think that's po possibly an aspect to it. The other aspect to it is, I think all of us have a different meaning of what love means, being, being in love means. And for her, it seems totally rational that at one point she did love him because she was like, oh my God, this is my man. I want to be with him. I have so much affection for him. They had some conflicts and then she started wondering, do I want to be with this person? You know, they both had those questions. And for her, when you're questioning like that, that means you're not in love. To be in love means there's no questions. And so for her, she has fallen out of love. For him, he has the questions, but he still says, well, I still love her. 
you know, love, it's a very subjective thing. And I think that it makes sense that she would feel that way. The question I have is, does she have the potential to fall back in love with him? And two, is she using this as some kind of weapon against him? Is she trying to hurt him by saying she's not in love with him? I don't know, but that would be some questions. <sighs> okay. Okay. And I mean, that, that makes sense. And I didn't actually know that if you question about being in love, then you're not technically in love. I didn't know that. Um, well, not, I mean, not technically for some people, right? That's how yeah. they would define for themselves what love means. To be in love means no questions. I want to be with this person. For another person, it could be different. Okay. Okay. So like you said, it's subjective. All right, and real quick before we bring up our, our other special guest, there is one other couple in here that I wanna talk about. Um, it's the couple that's introducing a third party into the relationship. Um, in your opinion, does it ever work to have a strong kind of dynamic and relationship, a strong foundation, and then start introducing third parties? Or do you feel like it eventually, maybe one of the two ends up falling more in love with the third party and then it ends up breaking off this like this this knot yeah well so in the technical term we call this is polyamory or open relationships or non-monogamy and right. there's a lot of research in it and seattle is kind of a mini mecca for polyamorous people and uh i've treated a lot of polyamorous people and open and non-monogamous people and it can absolutely work it might be hard to visualize if you've never seen it before right but it, it absolutely can work some people are just oriented in having lots of loves you know that's what polyamory means is many loves and some people they that's their home base is is having many relationships or two and that's okay i wonder why if they know why they're both heading into this kind of relationship i wonder if they both understand because polyamory uh, when you make that transition, you have to have a lot of conversations. And that's why they come to therapists because they'll sit on my couch and we'll bring all three people in and we'll be like, okay, how do we want this relationship to work? How are we going to handle jealousy? What's the plan for the future? Let's talk about our feelings. You know, there's a lot of talking and I wonder if they've done that work uh, prior to that. Well, it almost seems like in this case, you know, he's, he is, wants to be, marry this woman who wants to explore her sexuality a bit more because she's more free. So to do so in the United States. Um, and he seems like he's okay with that, but I'm just wondering if, in your opinion, have you ever seen where this has been a gateway into actually like starting, like maybe she wants to explore what it would be like with other women, but really in her mind, she knows that she would pr prefer to be with a woman instead of a man. And yeah, then it absolutely. Kind of, okay. Yeah, that could happen. She could find, wow, you know what? I really want to be with this woman or I want to be with women in general. And I really don't want to be with men, but that can happen in any, any relationship, you know, at any point someone could say, you know what, I think I'm done with this relationship and I want to move on. So uh, there's a lot of possibilities and I just hope that they've talked a lot about the move and the transition before making that leap. I wonder if they're heading into it knowing what the risks are. That's my, that's my worry. Okay. All right. Well, I, I'm excited for this new season. Again, like I said, watching this past season that we just watched kind of threw me off a little bit, especially when the castmates come on and they start telling us what's fake, what's not real, you know, talking about how sometimes producers make them say X, Y, and Z. And then, you know, we feel like we've been bamboozled a little bit. So with these couples, I feel like it's completely organic. I know I said that, but it just makes me a little bit more excited. And I hope that you continue to watch this, this season too. Yeah, I plan to. All right. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. All right. Well, <laughs> We do have another special guest in the room. Um, we have Paul in the room. So shall we just bring him up? Yeah, please. All right. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Doing all right. How are you doing? Good, good. How how have you been since last time we talked? Getting there one day at a time. One day at a time. <laughs> one day. Okay. And well, Dr. Kirk, um, just to kind of bring you up to speed, um, Paul and Karini are 
um, expecting their second baby. So, <laughs> that all, I mean, there's a lot happening for you. Yes, quite a bit. All right. Well, I mean, is, is so everything's still positive right now? Everything's still going good? Well, um, normal, I guess you could say, I guess. <laughs> How to put this? Um, I'm trying to make the best way to put this. I mean, when, you have, when your wife's pregnant, there's going to be ups and downs. So just mainly just, you know, right now me and, me and Pierre are on the balcony to enjoy in the, the view and the breeze a little bit out here. Uh, just giving her her space uh, to, um, you know, be herself for a little bit, I guess you could say. Okay. And I mean, just out of curiosity, because I don't ever see myself ever having having a baby or getting anyone pregnant in any capacity, with all things considering. But do you feel like this? It's different the second time around than it was the first time. Kind of navigating your relationship and also having a baby on the way. Karini seems to think um, that it's uh, it's it's mostly uh, like in regards to the pregnancy and things like that. Uh, she thinks that a lot of the things are, uh, in her perspective, the same as before um, in regards to things. But in relationship wise, I mean, I guess I kind of agree. Like the ups and downs and roller coasters throughout the pregnancy are, are very much similar to the same. Um, different incidents that we would have where she would, you know, say certain things and this and go one way. And then uh, she supports like, oh, I've never said this before. It's like, you actually did. We, we, we did two seasons on the TV show based on these, <laughs> these things. So it's all on camera. Uh, so in, in every time was like right before the miscarriage, we had similar problems. Then before Pierre was born, we had similar problems. Then right now we're having some similar, but a little more dramatic roller coasters like we did before. So it's been a little bit um, crazy, but I see a pattern. I see like a, I guess it's almost like it's, but you're the doctor, doctor. So, but I see like a psychological pattern. It's like every single time uh, she's pregnant, there's kind of a a pattern that we seem to go through. Yeah. So Paul, we talked. I don't know a few months ago, and um, you were asking me some questions, and I couldn't really answer them because I you're not clients, and so I didn't really know. But I will say that as a person that you know, human to human, I care about you and I want what's best for you and your family. Um, I'm curious, uh, how are things going? Um, it's, it's still, it's like I said, it's one day at a time. Um, the biggest thing is, is space and things like that. Um, making sure she has her space and she's got her family and things here. Um, you want to see Pierre? Greeny? You want to see him? Or it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I think he wants a bottle. He looked like he was hungry earlier. Could you please bring me a bottle? Huh? Yeah. Um, he's hungry. I'll, I'll make a bottle in a minute. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'll order some food since we got the interview. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. I'm sorry. What were we talking about? I just wonder how you're doing. I wonder how the two of you are doing together. <laughs> Perfect timing on her part. Um, it's just, it's one day at a time. And um, I found being here um, before, we did a group therapy and we had group therapists, things like that, that we went to and um, didn't always take too well. But here with her family, they've been really good for her mental health and their spaces like that. So things get dramatic that she can go off with her family and talk, be with them. And that way with the whole thing, they, they, they only care about her best interests at heart. They only want her to be mentally healthy they only want her um you know her best interests so she can you know, go and visit her family be with her family they can you know have gatherings and things like that and um she can socialize and i think it's a lot more positive for her in brazil with her family um in the united states there's a lot of negativity a lot of toxic things kind of going in um just, just making things way way escalating way out of hand worse uh but in brazil her family has been very loving and caring very accepting uh they've been uh, what sweetie? Uh, his bottle. Um, he, he already had a second go in there. Um, it, it has to be somewhere in there, sweetheart. It's it's in there. I'm sorry. Uh, she's looking yeah. for his bottle. He, yeah. he runs around with his bottle. He never knows where he puts it down at. Uh, <laughs> Parenting never ends. 
you know, huh? YouTube just has to wait for parenting to continue. Yeah. And it's basically, you know, um, I'm learning a lot. And like for Brucey, I talked to you. I talked to other psychological health people. Um, I talked to uh, I guess be, what was a doctor and was a therapist, I guess. Uh, we had, I had two ones I talked to weekly as well. And that helped me out a lot with not only dealing with my problems, but also you know, dealing with things that she's dealing with. Um, but she didn't want to get help. She were in therapy, then she retracted from therapy. So I was okay. We do. We came here. She's um, with her family. The other thing was I want to try to help her promote being more destructive. Um, you know, getting out of like her depression. So I'm I'm really pushing for her to like follow her dreams. I want her to finish. She's she only has a little bit of stuff to finish to get her equivalency of a hospital diploma. Um, I really want her to finish that. Follow her dream in cosmetology, making new friends in that field. Um, want her to help her get a driver's license. Uh, so that way, you know, if she can drive in Manaus, she can definitely drive in Kentucky. Because here is it's it's crazier than New York or anywhere you can possibly think of in the course of driving. Um, but I want her to be able to go be able to go out as a Mercy with Pierre or or if she wants to go to college or go out with somebody, she can go jump in a car and go somewhere. So while we're here this time, you know, I want her to finish her schooling so she can go to college in the United States, she can have her driver's license, have all the stuff good to go. I feel that she's moving toward her goals and dreams and being, you know, independent and productive in that regard. It'll help with her self-esteem and maybe help their relationship in the long run. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, and just hoping that maybe if she gets, you know, gets a little more, uh, I guess you could say, constructed with things and moving forward that I'm hoping it'd be possible. That's the goal. That's the point. I mean, it, I mean, I don't know, but I'm, it sounds like the two of you are better than when the last time I talked to you. Is that true? we are able to coexist a lot better a lot better um, that, sounds, that sounds better to me that's fantastic yeah it's a lot better to me um we don't have dramatic things with the police coming over or anything like that so I mean, <laughs> that's a good thing and here's nice and too we have a fighter problem i can just go down and, and just get her family and her family comes up and they'll talk to her she'll go down there and then things get real bad then i might go to a hotel for the night just let her relax come back the next day she may pay, I need this and this, and I'll come back. But, you know, being able to, to giving a lot more space and not having other toxic people involved in the relationship has helped dramatically, I think. And then also, like I said, her following some of her dreams and completing things that her family's excited about her finishing her schooling and advancing her education and following her dream goals and, you know, her, her dream career and things, I think it's going to help out a lot also. But I think in all reality, she's just trying to figure herself out, you know, and, and who what she is and what she really wants out of life. So it's been, that's been a big difficulty for all of us. And, and that's what she wants to do. These are the things that she would like to pursue. She's been talking about this for years and I know her family was really wanting her to push for finish her education too. And uh, I've been promoting it and that's why she, you know, I, I got these people and they've been friendly. First, she didn't really, like, we're doing a little documentary now on it. And at first she didn't want to film or anything like that. But then she started filming and, I took a big step back. Like I get the guy set up, filmings like that. Then I would step back. I wonder what I'm trying to document. Then I would totally leave. I come back. She's laughing. She's having fun. I say, hey, do you enjoy? She said, yeah, I'm really enjoying having a good time. And uh, we've been feeling like that and having a lot of fun with it. Now, we're taking a little bit right now <laughs> because she went and got some lip treatment done. So her lips are just huge. They look like she has Botox and Botox. She wants to, obviously, she don't want that documented on camera. So we're taking a little bit break from it. But the people are coming over. They're talking. She's enjoying their friendship. She's learning new things. Um, and I feel that's the big positive for being able to talk to the people and, you know, with their family, but also other people and learning what people have our best interests at heart, what people, are, you know, want Korean to be a better person rather than trying to spin up some drama and cause some things for their own personal entertainment and kind of, uh, you know, ma manipulate their own entertainment out of the situation and make things worse for my entire family. These people, they have our interests. They want her to go to school. They want to educate herself. They want to help her get her career goals. And I think it's been a good, very good thing for them. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate it. Thank you. Is he sleeping? Oh, let me see. Didn't realize he fell asleep. Um, he's sort of we drifting in and out. He's he's sort of yeah. nice. He loves hammock, and uh, he he comes out here. He'll fall asleep and everything. He's been he's saying a few words now, but I mean he's, he's hearing Portuguese and English. So uh, it's I, my understanding is when they hear two languages, it's a little late bloomer uh, for them to start um, talking. So hopefully he'll talk more and more soon. Well, you know, I'm, I'm monopolizing things. I'll hand it back to Adam, of course. But uh, I just want to, you know, I know where you two were uh, a few months ago. And it sounds like you've definitely made some improvements thinking about each other, trying to 
look, you know, move into the future in a positive way, take care of each other. You you care about Karini and you, you want what's best for her. And it's just a really great thing to hear. Uh, it yeah. really got to a bad place and the two of you persevered. You got your family involved and you, you kept at it. And, um, it's just that's just really fantastic to hear, Paul. It's that's great. Yeah, it's been it's been positive, and like so the big thing is too. It's like you know, having uh, not even a lot of stuff on social networks we had before. Of course, that was a big problem that we had, and then um, in regards to uh, letting things in the past go, we had some things in the past that happened, and letting those things go, that was a hard thing for me. That that actually helps out dramatically too. And being here and letting her be with her family and finally following her dreams and her goals. It's been very, 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 very promising. Her family's here now. Hello. <laughs> so it's been, it's good. So we live right here and her family lives next door and then the apartment below. So we're surrounded by her family. Um, right. So anytime, you know, if she wants a family, there's always family nearby. Um, her brother's actually currently here. He's actually uh, one of the nurses in, in Tana Cheens. So we have a medical guy right next door. Uh, so it's been very, 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 very positive. But it's, we have made some drastic improvements. We're getting the day by day, learning each other psychologically and advancing. Uh, hey, Cree, is anything you want to say? Anything you want to say? You can say over here on the side. What? Uh, Dr. Kurt and uh, Adam is who we're talking to. It's, would you like to say anything, Cree? No. Got any? <laughs> or I was hoping she'd say something off camera, maybe. She's not gonna come on camera because the whole lip situation. But I was hoping maybe she'd say something off camera. Sure. Um, but yeah, main investing is just like space has been been a big thing. It's just you know, in here we can do it a lot easier too. She built a family or things are too hectic here. Then I can you know, there's a hotel close by. I go to the hotel for a little bit, relax, go to the shopping mall, get something to eat, and then give her some time to cool off, and then come back and everything's fine. You know, um, so I'm. I'm getting there. You know, I'm learning, you know, what I need to do to not make things worse, make things better. You know, how can I de-escalate the situation, you know, and not intentionally make things more dramatic and worse? What can I do to help make it more positive and move in a positive direction? So uh, I'm trying to be more step back and look back, you know, down myself and say, okay, what am, what am I doing? Am I doing something wrong? Am I trying to be more self-aware, you say? Yes, we are. Huh? My hearing is really bad. I'm sorry. What'd you say, sweetie? I just is there anything like to say this? Is this is Dr. Kirk and Adam? You want to say anything to them? To say hello? Doctor. Doctor Kirk. He's a doctor. Is there anything you think we should work on? Maybe he can help me out with psychologically. Uh, yeah, he's a he's, no, he's a psychological doctor. See? Yeah. That's uh, I, I can't yes. treat you over there, YouTube. That's that's not going to happen. But uh, yeah. I appreciate <laughs> the, the vote of confidence. Hello. hello. <laughs> Well, Paul, it's it's really great to hear that everything is going really well for you and Karini. And, you know, I think that we're, we're just appreciative that you showed up today and you gave everybody an update because everybody only wants to hear the best and see the best for the both of you guys, especially yes. because you guys are a great looking little family and we're sending you guys all the love. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's that's Adam. That's not, she thought he's, you think it's John. It's not John Yates, it's Adam. It's Adam. It's Adam. I'm and then sorry. That, that's Doctor. And that's Doctor. Uh, Doctor. Doctor Kirkhonda, right? Yep. And it's live. Yeah, it's live. They're on right now. Is there anything you like to say? Uh huh. Say anything you want. Your English is really good, sweetie. Your English is very, very, very good. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. Huh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, she's in a positive mood now. She's doing good. I'm really happy. She's been, she's feeling a lot more positive, and her her family's here, and her friends are here. So I'm I'm happy that she's in a positive mood right now. Very, very, very happy. Well, Paul, Dr. Kirk Honda, we are approaching our half hour time. Um, Dr. Kirk, I, I appreciate you so much for jumping on here and joining us. As always, it's a pleasure. And to just kind of have a conversation where we get to look more in depth into what's going on and not just keep it so surface. So I really do appreciate these conversations with you. And Paul, as for you, again, we are sending you and Karini all the love along with little baby Pierre and everybody else. Anytime you have advice for me, I'm always welcome to your all's advice. So feel free to give me any time. Oh, thanks, Paul. <laughs> All right. All right. And Dr. Kirk, again, um, always a pleasure. Is there anything that you want to say before we go? Will you come on my channel to talk about 90 Day Fiance?
Yeah, of course. Anytime. And I promise I won't have this awful. I didn't close the window before I came in here. So I won't no, have nice. You always have an I always say you have a nice glow about you that's always present and that really uh exemplifies that. I'm I'm doing a I'm calling it a recap round table after every episode with some of my pals. So maybe you could come on and, and join the round table. Hey, anytime. Let's I mean honestly, shoot me an email. I'm always so thankful to steal you for our channel. So, I mean, if it's an honor, if you'll have me definitely yeah. I'll be there. Cool. All right. All right, Dr. Kirk, we'll see you next time. Yep. I hope you have a great week. You too. All right. Bye. And guys, wow. All right. So that was a great kind of starting to try to understand what's going on with the different dynamics. Um, as far as the new castmates for TLC's 90 day fiance, I think, again, I said this already a few times, but I feel like these are a little bit more organic. Um, I feel like they're, they're true storylines that we can at least buy into, and that's what we're hoping to do. Again, I'm so sorry about this light, guys, but uh, I guess maybe I'll be on Dr. Kirkonda's uh, roundtable one day. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, and for Paul and Karini, we're sending them all the love. Sounds like they're doing better and better, so... That's all we like to hear. We just want everybody to succeed in life and have the best life possible. So again, guys, if you have a second, just take a, a minute and send them all your positive love and light. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.